The PC peripheral market seems to be in a furious race to convince you that your current hardware is just too slow. What, your keyboard reports keystrokes at 125 hertz? Unacceptable. You're somehow still using a PS2 ball mouse? Throw it in the garbage. What you really need to get good is a 4000 hertz keyboard to go along with your 8000 hertz mouse. I'm joking, of course, but I actually do appreciate the push towards faster and faster polling rates. I'm almost universally in favor of any technologies that can reduce the delay we perceive from when we initiate an action, whether that be a keystroke or a mouse movement, and when we see the result happen on our screens. I'm definitely not a pro gamer, but I've always considered myself pretty sensitive to lag. I still used a CRT as my primary display up until 2015. But how much does a millisecond here or there actually matter? In my Input Lag Revisited video, I showed this mouse movement to first pixel response chart for Destiny 2, and I want to look in particular at the four 120 FPS results. With Destiny 2's internal frame rate cap set at 120, the average lag was only 16.8 milliseconds, which we can use as a baseline. That's quite a bit higher than an 8000 Hz polling lag of 0.125 milliseconds. But when GPU limited at that same frame rate, the lag more than doubles to 41.2. The other two GPU limited results, 35.9 and 24.3 milliseconds, show the benefit of using something like Nvidia's ultra low latency mode or reflex. Now, obviously lower is better, right? But could you tell a difference between any of these? One test that unfortunately gets used as a proxy for how latency sensitive we are is Human Benchmark's visual reaction time test. Wait for green, wait for green, click. On their stats page, after millions of clicks, they've got the average reaction time at 284 milliseconds, which seems high, more than a quarter of a second. I think, I hope I can do better. After a few practice runs, I can get my average into the 170s, but that's still much higher than anything I showed for Destiny 2, even at its worst. So maybe 41.2 milliseconds isn't so bad after all. No. There's a huge difference between seeing a stimulus, processing that a change has in fact happened, and then commanding your fingertips to click a mouse button, versus you initiating a movement, anticipating, and then seeing the results happen on screen. 41 milliseconds of lag is actually a lot. Check out Blurbuster's Input Lag and the Limits of Human Reflex article for more information about why reaction time tests don't tell us much about how sensitive we are to latency when moving a mouse. So, what's a better way to test? Way back in 2014, Flood, on the Blurbusters forum, posted a simple A-B input lag test made in Love2D to help answer this question. His test split the screen into two halves, one randomly selected half with no delay, and the other where the cursor movement was delayed by a user-selectable amount. You'd click the laggier side, and after 25 trials, you'd get a score. One problem with this was pointed out by Pisto in the replies. With VSync off, your newest, freshest mouse position could be completely missed depending on the display's scanout. For instance, if the mouse cursor were at the top of the screen and the display scanout had already passed, you'd have to wait a full display cycle before you'd see any change in the cursor. This will always be a problem for lag testing when using only a small portion of the monitor's total vertical height, like a mouse cursor. But Pisto, in the comments, suggested a great fix. Instead of a cursor, if you were to use a moving vertical line that ran the whole height of the screen, no matter where the display scanout was, you'd always see your newest inputs on at least some portion of the screen. Well, I'm late, way late to the party, but I wanted to see if I could improve on Flood's 2014 program. And here it is. Introducing Aperture Grill's Latency Split Test. LST is a simple UE4 build that should be able to run on most semi-modern PCs at a VSync off 1000 FPS. Similar to Flood's program, LST tasks you with choosing between two scenes, one lagged, one not, A or B, to see if you can actually tell a difference. Each test is composed of 16 trials, and if you can correctly select 13 out of those 16, you can be confident that you feel a real, perceivable difference. The goal here is simple. Once you pass a test, keep dropping the latency until you can no longer get 13 out of 16 correct. That will be your latency threshold. Maintaining 1000 FPS is important, and I'll get into why in a bit, but otherwise the program looks very much like what I'm sure Pisto was envisioning back in 2014. There are a few differences though. Flood's program was split into two halves, left and right, but LST's lag and no lag scenes use the whole screen, and you can swap between them by right-clicking. 
but it may be easier to demonstrate how it works by just running through a test. When you first load the program, the main menu will pop up with setup and testing directions. Set the display mode to either full screen or borderless full screen, and keep the FPS limit at 1000 FPS. If your PC isn't quite fast enough to maintain that 1000, you can try lowering the rendering resolution even further, but I've got it at 25% by default, so more than likely your CPU may not be up to snuff. 1000 FPS, or a 1 millisecond frame time, is necessary because I can only delay the lagged scene by integer multiples of the frame time. So if you're only hitting 500 FPS, you'll be limited to increments of 2 milliseconds. The full instructions are there on the menu, but let's just get into it. At the top left of the screen, you can see what your current lag settings are. The defaults are 0 milliseconds of lag on the low end and 30 on the high end. But I want to start with something crazy high, like 100 milliseconds, something that I think everyone can pass. Mouse wheel up or down will change the high setting, and I'll go ahead and bring this up to 100. The actual lag added, based on UE4's current frame time, is displayed next to your target lag, and it should be the same if you're hitting 1000 FPS. You can also adjust the low level latency with control mouse wheel, which could be useful if you want to see if you can distinguish between something like 30 and 40 milliseconds, but I want to leave that at zero for now. And then just move the mouse. Watch and feel how the vertical line moves with your mouse input. With 100 milliseconds of added lag, you'll know right away if the scene you're in, shown at the top of the screen, is the lagged one. You can swap between A and B with the right mouse button, but make sure that you stop moving the mouse before you do. The program will bark at you if you haven't, which may be a little irritating, but that check is critical to ensuring that the results of the test are valid. If I allowed a scene swap while your mouse was still in motion, the swap from lagged to non-lagged, or vice versa, would cause a small but detectable hitch in the movement of the white bar, and you could use that to cheat the test. Right now we're in free mode, so you can click away to your heart's content. When choosing between A and B, click to select the laggier scene. The screen will flash either green or red to indicate if you got it right. But let's start an actual test. Hit spacebar. The mode will switch to test in progress, and you'll see which trial you're on. We're starting with one out of 16. You'll see how many you've got correct, and you'll also see the p-value. I'll talk about the p-value in a bit, but let me run through this test pretty fast. Hopefully I can get 16 out of 16. If not, something is very wrong. Ah, 16 out of 16. Nice. After the test is done, you can see your latest results down at the bottom right. If you'd rather not know which ones you've got right or wrong during the test, you can uncheck the Show Score During Test button. Some beta testers found the instant feedback dispiriting, or at least distracting, especially when testing at really low latency values. Getting a trial wrong and knowing that you got it wrong may send you into a spiral of self-doubt, so that's an option. With 16 out of 16 correct, I think we can all be pretty confident that I'm actually feeling a real difference. It'd be unlikely to blindly guess and get all 16 right. But what happens when you drop the latency and the test gets harder? At some point, you will start getting trials wrong. So what's the cutoff? How many of those 16 trials do you need to get right to be confident that you can tell a difference? That's where the p-value comes in. The p-value shows the probability of getting a certain number of trials correct if you were actually just guessing. Let's look back at the p-value for that 16 out of 16 trial we just did for 100 milliseconds. 0 0.00002. That's very small. Meaning, there's only a 0.002% chance that I could have guessed 16 out of 16 correct if I couldn't actually tell which one was which. Here's another way to think about it. If you flipped 16 fair coins, you'd probably end up with roughly 8 heads and 8 tails. If you flipped those same 16 coins again, perhaps you'd get 10 heads and 6 tails, or maybe even 11 heads and 5 tails. But the further you are away from an even 50-50 split, the less and less likely that becomes. Since I had some free time, I actually ran this experiment 40 times, and here are the results. As expected, most of the trials ended up having between 7 and 9 heads. On two of the trials, I got extremely lucky and got 3 and 12 heads, but notice that I never got 13, 14, 15, or 16 heads. The probability of getting 16 heads by chance, 0 0.00002, means that if I redid this experiment not 40 times, but 100,000 times, I'd only expect to get 16 heads twice. Let's run through that 100 millisecond test again, but this time paying attention to the p-value. When I get the first trial correct, the p-value is 0.5. That makes sense, right? 
there was a 50% chance of me just guessing correctly. When I get the second trial right, the p-value drops to 0.25, or a 25% chance of guessing 2 out of 2. But as I keep selecting the right choice, the p-value keeps dropping, indicating that it's becoming less and less likely that I'm getting these results by chance. But let me purposely miss the last three trials. That means I'll get 13 out of 16 correct. That gives a p-value of 0.01064, or close enough to 1%. Relating that back to our coin flip experiment, there's only a 1% chance when flipping 16 coins of getting 13 or more of the same face. It could happen, 1% is not zero, but it's pretty unlikely. Same thing here with latency split test. I could have just randomly guessed and got 13 right, but that's also pretty unlikely. That's why I chose a cutoff of 13. Less than that, and it becomes more and more likely that you're just guessing. So, 100 milliseconds of mouse lag, well below my human benchmark reaction time of 170 milliseconds, is ridiculously easy to feel. Let's go lower. The default lag setting of LST is 30 milliseconds, and here, it's also really easy to tell. 16 out of 16. Click-based reaction time tests are just not a good proxy for how sensitive you are to mouse latency. All right, let's cut that in half, now down to 15 milliseconds. Interesting, that's also easy. Another 16 out of 16. Where it gets hard is when we start testing at 10 milliseconds and below. A couple tips here. I suggest setting the mouse sensitivity in the menu such that there is a one-to-one -one correlation between the distance you physically move the mouse and the distance the white bar travels on the screen. The sense can be set to four decimal places, so you should be able to find a value that will make the two movements match up. You may also want to increase your DPI a bit, and it really does help to have a light mouse. Here's my result at eight milliseconds. Whew, still 16 out of 16, but this one was hard, and not only because I was doing it on camera and at two in the morning. Instead of completing the whole test in seconds like before, this one took me minutes. One big problem here is shoulder and arm fatigue. As the test goes on, you can be deceived into thinking one scene is laggier than another, just because your arm starts to feel less responsive. It actually helps to give your arm a quick rest between trials. But here's the rub. Even though you may pass a test at eight milliseconds, if it takes you five minutes with a rest between each trial, does it actually matter? In a real game, you don't have time to carefully agonize over millisecond differences in lag. So if you want to find a more realistic latency threshold, drop the added lag down only until the test is no longer easy, then stop right there. But I really do want to know how low I can get. Let's cut the lag in half again. At four milliseconds, this is becoming extremely difficult. If we take a look at a slow-mo shot of the screen, at 4 milliseconds, the lagged scene will only be four of these partial torn frames behind the non-lagged scene. For some of these trials, I'm convinced I know which one is the lagged scene, but I get it wrong. And the best I can manage is 12 out of 16. Not good enough. When LST first came out, there was a really interesting thread on the Blurbusters forum with people posting their results, but one stood out to me. Matrix QW first posted this shot. 16 out of 16 at 10 milliseconds. Eh, I can beat that. But 16 out of 16 at 5 milliseconds. Huh. He followed that up with another post that I still can't quite believe. This crazy sequence of passing tests from 3 to 2 to 1 millisecond is astonishing. No idea how he did it. At 1 millisecond, you have to discern a difference of one partial frame. I think Matrix QW might actually need an 8000 Hz mouse. Think you can do better? You can find the download at apertureGrill.com, and I'll leave a link in the description below. It's not a virus, I promise. I want to see someone get 14 out of 16 correct at one millisecond. If you do try it out, post your results, and let us know what monitor you have, what refresh rate, what mouse, and what DPI. And if you find any bugs or have any suggestions on how to make LST better, let me know. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching.